Please join me here on this night on Mist Island to read one of the books from the Mist Library. Before arriving in this age, I was determined that it would be a journey to a world very different from my previous adventures, and it was. The sky here is dark and gray, and incessantly displays flashes of lightning in the distance. I met a very old man with a long beard and hair that hangs to his waist. He is very feeble and has trouble even moving. This man has obviously been through very many things in this strange world, and I have learned many things from him. He has told me an interesting story of this world's history. Years ago, he told me, there was a beautiful city that rose up out of the water. It housed many people inside its walls, and the people had everything they wished for. The city was surrounded by three high hills which rose higher than the city. On the east hill of the city rested a large lookout post. The people of the city had constructed the post, expecting visitors to arrive from the east. The people had no means of traveling on the water, which forced them to merely wait for friend or foe. As time passed, Friendly visitors brought rumors of an enemy that existed beyond the horizon. The people grew fearful, yet nothing happened. One day, the usually sunny sky became as dark as night, and black ships appeared on the horizon. The lookout post's attempts at peace were turned away, and the sentries there were easily overwhelmed. The ships continued to wreak havoc on the city, apparently destroying everyone and everything. After the foundations of the city were destroyed, the city sunk deep into the ocean, and only the lookout post remained. The black ships sailed away. The man continued to say that eight people had hidden and managed to survive through the attack. In the nine years since the attack, two of the survivors had died. He also said that it was rumored that ten years from the attack, the enemy would return to finish the destruction they had started so long ago. I have decided since hearing the man's story, it would be admirable to save this civilization and stop this enemy's plan of destruction. I am excited about the adventure that awaits me, and an idea has sparked in my mind to provide the needed defense for these people. I met the remaining survivors today, and I have begun work on a plan for protection. After a short absence, I have returned to this age with my two sons. They have, as of yet, traveled rarely with me, and they are understandably excited to be here. They have grown considerably since Everdoon's, and it is already obvious to me that they will be a great help this time instead of the nuisance they have been in the past. All three of us, along with four of the healthier survivors, began construction today. We are building upon the old city's ruins, which will provide a perfect foundation for our fortress. My sons have been spending much of their spare time on the South Island, where most of my materials are stored. I am very pleased with their intelligence, and their creativity is refreshing to see, as they work on some small projects of their own. It has been over four months now, and construction is going well. 
My sons love the world except for its gray sky. They detest the gray sky and tell me many times they wish the sky here were like the blue sky and mist. The old man I first talked to tells me that the enemy is due in four months. I feel we will be ready when the time comes. The man reminds me of Emmett in many ways, and I often wonder how Emmett and his people are doing. I believe that was the boy from the stone ship age. It has been six months of work, and we have finally finished the fortress. It rests between the three hills, which are now only islands due to a rising water level that the people experienced after the attack. Inside the fortress, I have designed a most intriguing device. It makes use of a technology called holography I began experimenting with on my visits to Aspermere. It will be working in a couple of days after I compensate for some small miscalculations. This holographic device will enable the survivors to learn to use the fortress. The enemy is due to come soon and I trust the fortress will provide sufficient protection for all of us. The black ships have come. Their attack was substantial. Their weapons have been stopped, and it appears they have turned away in defeat. I could not help but smile as I watched the boats leave. The insignia of the black ship. Last night we had a small celebration, and the old survivors danced their dances of old. My sons did not understand why the sky had not turned back to its original blue. The old man told them that the storms would never end until the enemy was destroyed. I assured my sons that a blue sky was not worth the risk of death, and they seemed to hear me. I have had a healthy adventure, and have begun work on a new book. Once again, I must leave a familiar age in search of a new universe I have begun. But first, I will have an extended time with Catherine, whom I miss very much. I must also return to the people of the tide. I believe in my travels I have found a substance that will ease the pain of their bone ailments that they have long endured. I hope to return to mechanical age one day and find the population growing and my fortress still strong. Though the sky may always be black, I am confident the people here feel a heavier darkness has been lifted from their shoulders. <laughs>